hotter, hungrier, far more competitive, more determined, hungrier. This is, this is how you have to be to attain higher levels of success than anyone else. You have to be totally focused on the outcome, totally focused on where you're going and what you're going to be doing. There's a, a saying in the ancient world, and it goes something like this, outperform your competitor um, as never euphronious. I don't know if you remember that, as never euphronious. The idea was that when they made a publication of some kind, they would turn around and say, uh, euphronious can never touch this. This is way better than what euphronious would ever have done. Euphronious obviously was just a wasn't just a, ju just a, he was a, a, a playwright, but also a, a hardy man in the ancient world, as never euphronious. In other words, what you're about to see is so awesome as never euphronious. Not even euphronious could do that. Um, outperform your competitor. So living in a time where you have to be able to do things that are completely on a different on a different level uh, in order to spectacularly gain credence and draw attention. Not drawing attention uh, could be a, a methodology, could be also a, a way of going about doing things. There are sometimes in business in com in competition that you don't want to draw attention yet. You really want to be able to make things happen. Um, there was a um, there was a boxer, I can't remember his name, I think it was Ash or Ash Burton or Burton Ash, something like that, and I apologize for not knowing that, but um, this was years and years ago that I, I learned about this, but he, his whole thing was don't, don't draw attention, you know, go in, uh, be blank faced, because this was a time of uh, apartheid in, in the United States, where, um, because of white to black segregation, segregation, uh, there was this thing about about you know uh, this particular boxer being in a ring and um, you know competing. So, like his dad taught him, you know, keep straight laced, don't show any emotion, don't draw attention. And many at times you don't want to draw attention. You know, that's one of the strategies, is don't draw attention. Not yet. Not until you've actually made something happen. Um, it's very interesting because many times I come across things online, on the internet, I discover this incredible artist, this musician, or this, um, this person that has been doing something extraordinary, and I go, wow, this is pretty amazing. And I look through his channel and he's got like 30 other pieces of music and I think that is incredible. How come I didn't know about him? Well, that's exactly it. They've kept quiet or rather their marketing perhaps wasn't as good as it should have been, but they've suddenly hit a little bit of a jackpot with this particular new track. Um, and all of a sudden everybody knows about him. Do you remember Alec Guinness uh, being involved <clears throat> in movies? He was constantly in films. I remember seeing him in the love letter in many, many, many movies, um, and he was sort of known, you know, and I only got to see these movies years, years later, because I was this little kid, and my dad used to like Alec Guinness for some obscure reason, I, I, I would watch Alec Guinness, and I'd go, wow, you know, but he didn't really phase, he didn't really phase into my interest uh, until Star Wars, and all of a sudden, oh, you know, Alec Guinness, you know. Sometimes you got to cut across target audiences to to be known, to get known. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. So yeah, drawing attention is important if you've got the right goods, if you've got something of value to say in the world. But if you don't, well, you know, maybe it's it's really not the way to go about it in terms of a strategy. So I'm. Um, that hunger that you've got inside of you, that is the big thing, right? You've got to, you've got to be able to outdo, outperform. Um, you've got to be hungrier than your competitor. 
at all stages. You know, you have to be able to go, right, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this on a much grander and larger scale, especially if you're getting into an industry that you hope to conquer in some way or another. I'd like you to think about it today and decide whether you really are that hungry. This morning, it was strange. I kind of maybe let myself down, but at the same time, I probably didn't. Because uh, I thought about it strategically. I got up quite early, and I could have tackled this journey, this one that I'm on now, uh, to, um, to one of the northern suburbs. And I thought, I'll just be stuck in traffic for an hour and a half. You know, I'll wait until 9 o'clock. And, uh, and I'll trek there. I won't, I won't have the advantage of showing that I'm really keen and determined at 7.30 by being there at 7.30 in the morning. But I'll be there at about 9.30, which is two whole hours later. However, I will have saved myself, because I'm on the freeway now, and it's a pretty cruisy, cruisy drive. It took maybe 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Yep, 15 to 20 minutes for me to get here. Not a, not a big deal, you know, kind of an easy, easy, easy crawl, um, easy cruise rather I should say because you know normally I crawl this road if I'm traveling um, you know it's a very slow road and it's a, a four uh, a four lane road so I don't know you know I kind of thought well I didn't make it at 730 but then again I didn't have to make it at 730 but I would have spent an hour and a half in traffic or more right I'm trying to crawl through the traffic in the morning very silly. I waited a little bit longer. Um, I did some of the things that I needed to do and now here I am uh, basically on the same road and uh, I used the other two hours, the other hour and a half, I think more effectively, more productively, more efficiently. So can you see, does that mean that I'm not hungry to be here, to have been here at 7.30? I don't know. Sometimes I think Maybe, maybe that's proof that I'm not as hungry as I'd like to be, you know? If I was really that hungry, I would have been here at 7.30, but I don't know. I don't think I'm, I'm doing this, uh, you know, I kind of think to myself, there are better methods, there are better methodologies sometimes. Sometimes, you know, um, sometimes you have to go back a little bit to be more efficient, to be more effective. Uh, recently, one of my films, I took it back onto the editing desk, How to Disappear and Never Get Found. And what I did was I just started recutting the film, I started re-editing it, re-editing it. I know I'm tweaking it, I'm doing it George Lucas and I shouldn't, and I, and, uh, cause the film did well when it was, was released. It was, um, but I, I thought, let me tweak it again. Let me just tweak it. There's a few things that I need to kind of do. I just get this feeling if I don't do them you know, it'll always be the back of my mind and it'll bug me. And I didn't do what Lucas did. I mean, Lucas added things to it. I didn't add anything. I, In fact, if anything, I trimmed it, I tightened it, I made it feel a little better. Uh, and, I, and I've been changing the score. I, I've, I've been rewriting the soundtrack and, and I've been doing a couple of things just to make it a lot more interesting. So, um, so... You know, we have to kind of go back a little bit sometimes just to to rethink our strategy. Just to redo our strategy. Because sometimes it makes sense to really just do it a little bit differently. It's worth doing a little bit differently sometimes. Instead of following the trend, following the way that it's normally done. You know, and, I, and I've changed that. I, I've changed the formatting. So looking a little bit forward to seeing the new version on a big screen. Okay, here's my stop. So I I just wanted to say, um, I just wanted to say, you know, stay focused on, on where it is that you're going. Stay focused on where it is that you are going. And, um, and I think you will discover that as long as you are hungry, really, really hungry for that, for that success, it will work for you.